Does the Lightning Network really help to scale the Bitcoin network? That might be a question you might be wondering if you were interested in Bitcoin or the Lightning Network. And you might remember, in the past there were various discussions to solve this scaling problem of the Bitcoin network, which only supports about seven transactions per second, which clearly means that not everybody in the world can use the Bitcoin network in order to do economic transactions. And one solution that was proposed in the past was to increase the block size or decrease the block time. And you can check out this video here where I've explained from a computer science perspective why this will not work. Um, and the Bitcoin developers have come up with a Lightning Network to do so-called second layer off-chain transactions in order to uh, help with the scaling of the Bitcoin Network and in order to onboard more people and allow them to do economic transactions. While I have explained that the other strategies do not work, critics have been very vocal of saying, well, it hasn't been proven yet that the Lightning Network does work and help to scale the Bitcoin Network. While I cannot deliver a formal proof here, I can share with you my experience of running a Lightning node for the past two years and explain you why I, as a developer and researcher, by now are fully convinced that the Lightning Network really does help to scale the Bitcoin Network. So let me tell you the story of my Lightning node. I fired up a Lightning node about two years ago, and this Lightning node um, has been used to do some transactions. So I think I have paid about 80 people with my Lightning Node, and I have received money from about 250 people. So this is already about 300 transactions that have happened off-chain and were not seen on-chain. Furthermore, um, last time I checked my statistics, my Lightning Node forwarded about 1,900 payments. So this in total is 2,200 payments that my Lightning Node was involved in. Now, when you look at the Bitcoin blockchain and look how many transactions are usually stored in a block, you will figure out that a block contains about 2,100 blocks. So 2,100 transactions per block compared to 2,200 transactions that my Lightning node was involved in means that my Lightning node has saved almost an entire Bitcoin block. So now you might wonder and say, why is Rene saying almost if he was involved in 2,200 transactions and a Bitcoin block usually has 100 transactions less? Well, over the time, my Lightning node was involved in opening channels and those are Bitcoin transactions. And then some of the channels have been closed, which are also Bitcoin transactions. And in total, these were around 200 transactions. So even for my personal transactions, receiving and sending Bitcoin, which happened over 300 times over the last two years. Um, I had more transactions than my on-chain footprint was. So even for me personally, this helped. But then I routed a lot of transactions. So if you take the total amount of payments that I was involved in, 2,200, and you subtract the 200 um, on-chain transactions that were necessary to fire up this lightning node, then you would see, yes, we saved about 2,000 transactions, roughly Bitcoin block. It's also interesting to note that my routing node was not very well managed. I mainly had people opening channels with me and whenever I received a few Satoshis, I got some liquidity. I never really provided liquidity to the Lightning Network myself. And if you look at the history of the Lightning Network, there's about 160,000 channels that have been opened. And well, I had maybe 160 channels that were opened on my end. So that means my node took only a very, very small part of the Lightning Network, meaning other nodes probably also had economic activity going on there, probably also having more economic activity in their node than they needed on-chain transactions, which means that these nodes also helped a lot to scale the Bitcoin network and reduce the on-chain footprint. And if you look at it, um, there is a huge interest in Bitcoin these days, but the on-chain fees are not skyrocketing. Uh, I assume this is partially because people are using the Lightning Network to do economic transactions. Um, also, there is a huge potential because there's so many stakeholders in the Bitcoin ecosystem that are still not supporting the Lightning Network um, who could do this 
and this would reduce the on-chain footprint even more. There is another really interesting takeaway that I learned from looking at this data, and this is that I earned about 1,000 Satoshis as routing fees. And when you look at a Bitcoin block, there is roughly one Bitcoin in fees inside a Bitcoin block. So you could argue now and say, hey, Rene, why are you not just mining Bitcoin and then create a block with all those transactions? You would get an entire Bitcoin for it. And here you got 1,000 Satoshis. Yes, that's true. But if I start mining Bitcoin, others will get less. There won't be magically more blocks just because I'm mining Bitcoin. The other thing is that mining Bitcoin burns a lot of electricity and needs specialized hardware. So it's actually very expensive to mine Bitcoin. Running the Lightning node was really easy for me. I had a server on the internet anyway, and I just installed additionally the Lightning node and it was just running there. So it cost me literally nothing. So there's a difference, right? So I can scale the network, I can contribute to the network, I can add and create value to it. People can use it, I can use it. Um, but the sunk costs or the operational costs are not comparable to Bitcoin mining. Right? So the Bitcoin mining is not to support many transactions, but it's there to secure the network. While the Lightning Network is there to um, create economic activity on the network. And of course, I can already hear the critics who are saying, yes, but payments on the Lightning Network fail, right? There's always this really unscientific study from 2018 that used a Lightning Network snapshot from the very early days. And they're saying, you can hardly even send a cent or something. I can tell you from my statistics, this is not true. Um, you can definitely send bigger amounts on the Lightning Network. Um, also, the reliability of the payments is a statistical random process, that's true. Uh, but it has been improved by a lot and we are about to also publish a research paper where we are actually modeling the payment process and explaining how we can improve it in general even further um, to get the success probabilities high and with that we can even give an expectation value of how many attempts are needed on average in order to make a payment and doing all this math um, I can easily see that payments are much faster than 10-minute confirmation. And if you think about several confirmations, um, then we can also see that, yes, even though a single payment attempt might fail on the Lightning Network, with this mechanism of probing and retrying, um, usually we get quite a good service level objective. Um, I will talk about this more in a future video. Um, but for now, I'm very happy to say that from my personal experience, I'm fully convinced that the Lightning Network is uh, working. As usual, I have a donation address uh, in the video description and in the top comment here. Very happy if you send over a few sats. You can do it on-chain or you can create yourself an invoice from my Lightning Network node. Um, so yeah, that's that. I wish you an awesome year 2021.